Hi everyone, hoping to give you a quick run through of some of the major changes that have come with the release of SketchUp 2022. First up is the new search function. I don't actually have the getting started toolset usually, so I'll open it up here and it's this button over here, search SketchUp. Now what you can do of course is just set that up with a shortcut which I would recommend. In fact, you can download my recommended shortcuts from the link in the top right hand corner now. So how this works, if I type in line, all the line related tools will open up and you can then just click your arrow keys and press enter to access that tool. This also works with extensions if they've been set up properly. I actually want to show you the lasso tool, so I'll start with that. What I want to do is zoom around over here and notice there's probably a few too many trees in this area. So let me open up the group. And I'll do a counter clockwise selection first. And what you'll notice is that selects every tree, even if it just slightly touches the lasso. And if I go clockwise, only the trees that were completely enclosed by the lasso will then be selected. Scene search, obviously I don't have that many scenes here, but a lot of people will. Probably less so than in the past because of the major improvements made to viewports in layout. But just in case you do have a lot of scenes, you can go into the search scenes button here, type in, in this case, perspective. Once again, use your arrow keys and access the appropriate scene. I'm actually gonna to go to this plan scene now because I want to access this structure underneath the building to give you a quick run through of some of the improvements to tags. I'm actually gonna put myself into perspective and I'll turn on color by tag. Now, color by tag has been available for a very long time, but now it has its own much easier to find button. So hopefully people will use it a lot more because it is an underutilized little feature. I'm actually gonna turn off site and entourage. We don't need to see either of those. Let's access the groups down here and I'll hide context so that you know what we're working in. We're working in the group that contains all of this. Now, admittedly, in this particular example, what I could have done is selected all of them, gone to entity, and then changed to footing, for example. But there are actually some interesting use cases for the new tagging tool. For example, access the tagging tool from here, or you can assign a shortcut, which of course I've already done. Tapping Alt allows you to access the sample or pipette. That means it's now programmed in, while by clicking onto this existing footing, the footing tag has now been activated. So all I need to do now is click on the group or component that I want to tag. There are some cool modifiers for this tool. So let me enter this group here and I'll turn context back on, so show rest of model. And you'll notice that this column or pillar, there are eight of them in the model. So that's these eight here. If I activate my tagging tool again, so in my recommended shortcuts, I've set them to Shift T. I can tap Control now. And what this means is that by clicking onto that one instance, all instances, even outside of context, will be re-tagged, in this case, to footing. Now that is actually quite useful. If I press Escape to leave this group, I'm just gonna quickly show you that these two objects remain untagged. And they're the only things that are untagged in this context. Because of that, if I activate my new tag tool, tap shift, what it's gonna be doing is anything that shares the untagged tag, in this case, is gonna be replaced with the footing tag. So single click, and you'll notice both of these objects switching across fully to the footing tag now. There's been some pretty interesting upgrades to the freehand tool as well. I'm gonna open up the plan scene again and I'm going to draw with the freehand tool. Left click and hold, draw your shape, whatever you want, connect it up. Now, I can press the Alt key to increase the resolution or increase the number of points along that freehand, or I can tap Control to reduce it. And obviously notice the detail there is reducing as I keep tapping that. Another really interesting development is that previously you could only draw freehand on a single plane. Now SketchUp will allow you to draw that across a number of different planes at the same time. Of course, the freehand works with the up, down, left and right arrow, so locking to primary axes. But interestingly, you can now also, I'll try and find a good surface to do this on, 
locked to an existing surface, so an existing plane. So I'm going to point on this surface, tap the down arrow, and what that does now is whatever I draw will be drawn only on that plane. One thing I've noticed is it doesn't create a surface and it's hard to make it create a surface. Hopefully that's something that uh, SketchUp will fix up soon enough. I'm going to undo all of those now. We don't need them. One thing that has annoyed SketchUp users for a very long time is issues with image or camera cropping. So what I mean by that is if you have a relatively large model and then you start working on very small details, like this for example, oftentimes you can find yourself finishing whatever you needed to do, leaving that group and then finding that your camera has massive clipping issues. So your camera is cutting into the model. Now this was mostly a problem with parallel projection, but it still happened in perspective sometimes as well. After doing some testing, I've noticed that's had massive improvements and very rarely happens by accident. You can force it to happen. But even in situations like that, the best thing to do is just to turn off rest of model. By the way, I have mentioned turning off rest of model or turning off context a few times already. And if that doesn't mean anything to you, I do recommend checking out the recommended shortcuts video because um, it is something that's quite useful that with a whole heap of other reasons to use shortcuts, definitely worth checking out. Let's go back to plan one now and let's pay special attention to the orientation of the building in this case. If I switch now to plan two, you notice obviously it's the same building, but our top down view has been rotated. That's actually not been possible in SketchUp before. And the way they've done it is really clever and very easy. So I'm actually going to delete this scene, go back to plan one. And what I'm going to do is create a new scene. So what you have to do is right click onto your primary axis, go place. So we're just placing our primary axis. Having placed our primary axis, our standard top down view now, which I just accessed via my shortcuts, now matches up with whatever I've set that primary axis to be. Now remember, primary axes can be programmed per scene, which means now every scene can have its own top down orientation set up how you like it. This is kind of okay for SketchUp, but it's really good for when you move to layout and want to produce documentation because you're not always going to have projects where everything is going to line up with whatever your primary, primary axis is going to be. Let me turn off level one. I'm going to save that change. And so now as we switch between plan one and scene seven, we can see that orientation change coming through. So obviously now I've switched across to layout to produce documentation from that model. This is my viewport for the plan zero one. If I want to make a copy of this, select it, copy it, go to a different page and paste it there. I can now switch that across to scene seven. And as you probably expected, the orientation of this viewport matches what we have in our scene in SketchUp. What I'm going to do actually is just get rid of that entourage close. More layout improvements. So if we go Control F, find and replace, obviously going to be very useful for updating documents when things need to be changed. Enough said there, I think. Selecting this call out. If I use view zoom selection, it'll obviously zoom to the selection. Now that makes navigating around the layout document a little bit easier. I've assigned a shortcut to that. I recommend you do the same. One thing that's always been very annoying in layout is you couldn't very easily derive information using auto text and labels from the actual viewport for things like scale. That has now been added. So if I access the auto text for the viewport, you'll see that the scene name is there and I've used that there obviously. And I've used here ratio. So what does that mean? As I make changes to this viewport, let's say for example, change it one to 200, we'll see that change represented. And obviously if I was to change the scene name, same thing would happen. Another thing that's really gonna be quite helpful is you may have noticed I've got site plan here. Now, 
that's actually incorrect because what I'm doing now is I'm referencing page name for page three, which is site plan. I can now change this to page four if I wanted and that's what I would be seeing. And if I just wanted to reference the page that I'm on, I can just remove that. First floor plan lines up with first floor plan. This is obviously how we're all going to be doing our table of contents from now on. Right, that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you. We did rush through quite a lot of stuff, hopefully trying to save you a little bit of time. And of course, if you do have some questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below.